morning. Uh, I apologize for my voice. I'm uh, starting to lose it, but uh, I still want to be sure that the students here uh, fully understand. I know you've watched these CDs. I know you've seen the RSES tapes, but now we're going to get physical here involved in the equipment. Hopefully by this time, if you have your own equipment, I'm talking gauges at this moment, you want to br start bringing them into the classroom so that you learn how to use your gauges and your equipment. Now, I understand this is only training, but we want you to be sure that you got your glasses and your gloves on. Now, this is a career field. Don't go out and get some 10 cent gloves. Get some good ones. You can get them at Home Depot, Lowe's, anywhere like that. And they're, they're nice. You know, they fit tight. They have the finger touch tabs to them. These are a little wore out, all right? But um, they're padded and they're safe, all right? For refrigerant, especially. The glasses, be sure that you got safety glasses on at all times when you enter the uh, lab area. So today we're going to discuss knowing more about how to use these tools. This, you'll, you'll hear them talk about three-way and four-way gauges. Now, it's a preference, okay? I'm not going to sit here and tell you you have to have four-way or you have to have three-way. That's totally up to you. Understand that if it's your equipment or ours, take care of it. These are not designed to be thrown around, dropped on the floor, or whatever. Don't throw them in the back of your truck. Hang them up because some of them are glycerin filled. Some are just uh, digital if you want to go that high with it. Some are just basics like what we have here. Now, there's several manufacturers out there that make these things. Yellow Jacket, uh, Imperial, are probably the most two standard type ones that are out there. Three gauge. Some people like it because they think it's easier to remember the steps. That's okay. But what you always want to do is be sure that you do not, all right, when you open or close these valves, remember it's just like a sink, a faucet. The more you tighten down on that, the more that rubber seal is going to wear out and leak, and then you're going to start ending up replacing these things. All you have to do is bring it and close it up. Right? If you start off with that, doing it, you won't have any problems. All right, now the hoses. Now, in this instance, let's talk about the whole, whole piece of equipment here. Most of them all have hangers. Don't lay this in the dirt. All right? Put it up on the unit, some means, so it's secured. Be sure all your plastic rings are faced, are in good condition. Now remember they were talking about the compound gauge. This is the compound gauge. Why the compound gauge? The compound gauge does two things. It reads pressure in the big, bold black numbers, and it reads vacuum from zero to 30. That's why that's called a compound. You'll also notice that inside you can have be able to read what is known as a saturation temperature. I wouldn't personally uh, go that direction, but take the pressure reading or the vacuum reading, but use your card uh, that we've been discussing about how to get your saturation temperature. It's a little bit more accurate. Now this being the high side gauge. So we got the compound gauge and the high side gauge. All right? You have your low side valve, high side valve. Now you got your hoses. Now, common sense will tell you that, you know, low side is standard blue. Your high side is standard red. Anything that's doing with evacuation, dehydration, charging, um, any of that is going to come out of your middle holes on a three-way valve. And that's typically yellow. Now, this is how it's supposed to be. That doesn't mean that's how it's going to be. You may have all blue or all red, all right? Don't worry about it. it it's the, the hoses, all right? They do 
the same job no matter what they're positioned at. Now you also notice that on this set of gauges, there's pressure in there. Well, somebody left the pressure in there and that's not right. right? That's why you gotta wear your gloves because this could be either nitrogen or it could be refrigerant. And if it's refrigerant, it's gonna burn. All right, so what you want to do is, before you start anything, always drain it. And the way to drain it is to open up the valve for the hose right at the bottom. All right, let that out. Now, if it's on the high side, it's going to maybe spray oil and refrigerant a little bit more, depending on how, how much pressure is in there. So just be careful with that. Now, on the back, you have your hoses connection. You can call these storage ports whatever you want to call them, but this is where the hoses are secured. Now you notice that there's two different ends versus the one that's in the middle. The reason being is because these are no loss fittings. You can buy hoses with them already on, which is the best method, or you can buy the holes like this and add this extension piece on there. Just remember, if you have holes like this and you want to add, you have to take the valve stem out of this hose. All right? But you just want to be sure that they're secured on there so that they're ready to go when you need them. Now, that's the three-way hose. Four-way hose. All right? You notice that there isn't a whole lot of difference in these things. Still compound gauge. Then you have your high side gauge. You still have your, they got a little niftier, they uh, you know put rubber cushions on these things. And you see where somebody has really cranked on this. Right? It doesn't need to be like that. You just firm it up. Right? This has a sight glass in it, so you can see the liquid. That's, you know, it's like a Volkswagen versus a uh, Lexus. You know, the more money you spend, the more bells and whistles you're going to get out of it. All right, all these components are replaceable. You can buy replaceable kits on these things. And you may have to do that every eh, two years or so, depending on how you uh, take care of your gauges because these things run anywhere from 140 to $500. And while we're talking about this, we normally just use R12 or R22, excuse me, in this course. We do have units that have 134 and 410A. So be very careful when you take units and check the gauges to be sure they're designed for that specific type of refrigerant. Remember that because if not, it's going to cost you very, it's a very expensive mistake. All right? So please be, be aware of that. Again, you got four valves here now instead of three. But you notice that now they're se segregated these things. You got your low side, you got your high side, you got your vacuum, and you got refrigerant. The vacuum is your 3 8 inch hose, much bigger. It, it hooks up to your um, compressor, or your uh, vacuum pump, excuse me, so it can do the job a lot faster. Everything else is quarter inch hose. Your refrigerant, that's all this gauge is for, the vacuum gauge, is to pull a vacuum on that unit. That's all its purpose in life is. This red hose, okay, is for refrigerant. Now, that can pull the refrigerant out, it can charge the refrigerant, right? it can add oil to it, but it's all done in, on this hose. You'll see when you get into the lab and you start playing with this stuff, that depending on uh, your mindset and how, how you um, understand the system and how it works, I have to do less disconnecting and connecting with a four-way set versus what I have to do with a three-way gauge. And that's the beauty about it. I can hook all my stuff up with a four-way gauge and all I have to do is know and understand how to work my um, service valves. 
all right? And that's what we're going to be discussing over the period of time in these uh, CDs, all right? Again, it has the connections in the back. Now, remember I told you, you can buy the hose with the no loss fitting on it, or you can buy an attachment. These attachments cost about 12 bucks. Personally, just buy it. If you get the option, just buy it all in one. Then you don't have to play around with it. But these are adaptable, okay? And uh, so this is what it would look like if you had an adapter. So when you're out in the, the training area, don't go and just take this end off of the no loss fitting. It's all one element. Otherwise, if you look inside, it doesn't have a, a valve uh, stem in there. So it won't push the valve uh, depressor, uh, won't push the uh, valve stem in. So when you take this, oops. The only other drawback to this is that you have to be sure that both of these valves uh, are seated properly, the stems, all right? But when you take it off, take the whole thing off, all right? A lot of students get in a hurry, and that's another drawback. Please slow down and stop and think what you're doing. Take good notes. Use your notes in your lab. This is an educational environment trying to get you to understand it, but there's going to be a point in time when we, we don't expect you to use your notes or anything. We want you to know it solid. And if that means that you can do it once and you understand it, you're a better guy than I am. But if you have to do it four or five times, that's what you're here for. That's what you're paying the money for. We're going to drill it into you, but we got to have your uh, backing and assurance that you're doing your share of it. So pay close attention to what's going on. If you don't understand something, review again, all right? Use your uh, a a h r i textbook, that big Bible we call it, and research this information. The more you know, the better off you're going to be. Now, we're going to take this equipment, so be sure that you fully understand this, this stuff, and we're going to move on to the next phase.